This guide shows you how to remotely control your 4K Fire TV stick from a Windows computer. So what we need to do is we need to download a couple of programs first of all. So open your browser, it can be any browser with the exception of Internet Explorer as Internet Explorer is old, outdated, insecure and probably will no longer work with this video. So let's just open Microsoft Edge. Once Microsoft Edge is open, go to the address bar right at the very top of the screen, not the search bar in the middle of the screen, but the address bar right at the top. Click in there, delete out anything that's in it, and we want to type flakei.co.uk. That's flakey. So flakei.co.uk, all in lowercase and no spaces. Then press enter or return on your keyboard and here we go, we'll get Flakey's blog. So what we need to do is we need to go to Fire Stick 4K there, okay? And then we need to go down to My ADB GUI app and then click once. Then we'll get this page appear. So we wanna scroll down, okay? And we wanna click on this one here where it says Flakey's ADB GUI app. 2.1. Now that figure might change because obviously he's releasing new versions all the time. So this video was recorded in May 2021 so it's quite possible by the time you're viewing this video that a new version may have appeared. So let's just click that. Okay we should see it now start downloading and this bit might take a bit of time but it is quite a small file. The next thing we want to do is we want to download this file up here where it's got scrcpy.adb remote control app. So let's just move our mouse over that, left click once and that will also start downloading. Again, this bit might take a bit of time, just be patient with it. And there we go, it's nearly finished downloading. We can tell it when it's finished downloading because that goes to open file. So I'm just gonna click on the little folder just there. Okay, and that's gonna open the downloads folder. And what we need to do is we need to first of all, right click on Flaky ADB. Okay, and then go down the list and left click extract all. Now we want to put this in a, uh, a, a certain place on the computer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just delete out all of this and just leave C colon forward slash flaky ADB GUI. Okay, and then I'm going to click extract. Again, this bit might take a few seconds. Okay, now I'm just going to click the cross at the top right hand corner of the screen there and then I'm going to extract this one, S-C-R-C-P-Y. So let's just right click that, then move our mouse down to extract tool, left click, okay, and we want to put that in the same place. So let's just delete out all of this here, and I'm just going to type in there, flaky, A-D-B, GUI forward slash. So there we go. So this is what it should look like. So it should be C colon forward slash flaky ADB GUI forward slash SCR CPY hyphen win six four hyphen V and then a version number. Okay, and then we just click extract. Again, that bit might take a bit of time. Okay, so now we've basically put this in the in the C drive. Now I'm just gonna close these windows down here. In actual fact, I can delete these two uh, zip files here in download. So I'm just gonna delete those. So left click on each of them and hit delete. There we go, and do that one and hit delete. That's it. Okay, so to get to them, let's just close that window down. We'll close down um, Edge as well. So I'm just going to click on any yellow folder on the screen. If you haven't got a yellow folder on the screen, click the Start button and then click on the Documents folder just there. And then what we do is we just click this PC and then we click the C drive here. And that's two clicks on that. And then we find, there we go, there's Flaky ADB GUI. So two clicks on that there. Okay, and then what we want to do is we want to click on the right mouse button with it over Flaky ADB GUI, and then this menu should appear, and then left click Properties, 
and then there should be a, a box there that says unblock just put a tick in the box to the left of unblock then click apply then click OK OK and now we just double left click flaky ADB GUI OK and then eventually we should get this screen appear so what we need to do is we need to um, locate the ADB program first of all so what we do is we just click locate ADB and then we should get this open box appear and we just need to double click on this SCR CPY hyphen win 64 and V hyphen V and then a version number so double click that and then double click on ADB. So the next thing we need to do is we need to go to our Fire TV stick. Press the picture of the house on the remote control so you're back to the main menu, then press and hold the picture of the house on the remote control till this menu appears, and then go across to settings, press the middle button on the remote control, and then you wanna find My Fire TV just there, press the middle button on the remote control, and then you wanna to go to About, press the middle button on the remote control, and then you wanna to go to Network, okay, and make a note of the IP address, that's what you need, is the IP address, not my IP address, but your IP address. This will differ from fire sticks to fire sticks, so don't bother copying mine, because the chances are it won't be the same as yours. Then press the back button, then go down to developer options, press the middle button on the remote control, and then make sure that both of these are turned on. So if they're not like mine, just gonna highlight ADB debugging, press the middle button on the remote control, that turns it on, and then apps from unknown sources, gonna press the middle button on the remote control, and then press the middle button again to confirm, then press the picture of the house. Then what we need to do is we need to click into remote IP and remember that IP address I told you to make note of on your Fire Stick. We need to type that in just here. So like I say, this is your IP address, not mine. So once we've done that, click into remote port there and then we need to type in there 5555. Okay, so then we just need to go to an click on connect ADB device. And now on our Fire TV stick, we should get something like this come up saying allow USB debugging. Okay, so we just need to press the middle button on the remote control so that a tick goes into that little box just there. Then we press the down button on the remote control so that OK is highlighted. And then we press the middle button on the remote control. Now we're back to the computer screen and as you'll see here, so mine's got failed to authenticate. So I'm just gonna click on that connect ADB device again and then hopefully it should connect. There you go, it says already connected. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is we need to go over to the right hand side of this box here and we need to click on locate SCRCPY. So click on that, okay. And then we need to double click SCR CPY hyphen win 64 hyphen V and then some numbers. So double click that and then double click on SCR CPY. Okay, so here is it's really down to experimentation now. So we've got the screen resolution here. So I'm just gonna click on default, the video rate, I'm just gonna click on default, but you might wanna play about with some of these figures to see what sort of um, speeds you get and, and, and what, what quality you get on screen. So now I'm gonna click the drop down just to the right of select device. I'm gonna click on the IP address of my 4K Fire TV stick, and then I can click on remote control. And hopefully, after a few seconds, we should then see the Fire TV stick screen. And there we go, the screen's come up and we can remotely control it by using the arrow keys on the keyboard. I'll be honest with you, it is quite slow, but it does allow you to remotely control the Fire TV stick. It would be handy um, if you needed to control a friend or a family member's Fire TV stick remotely, uh, what you possibly could do is you possibly could uh, get them to open a port in their router so that it maps to the IP address of the, uh, the Fire TV stick and the port number 5555. I don't know what sort of security imp implications this would give you, but it possibly would be a, uh, a way of doing things. I mean, maybe you could talk your friend or family member 
into putting that rule in and then taking it back out again and just putting it in and out as and when needed. So you can truly remotely control their Fire TV stick from a, an entirely different location. But uh, in any case, quite a handy little tool here. And all you need to do to come out of it is just to click on the cross just up there in the top right hand corner of the remote box. And there you go, it's now disconnected. So there you go, I hope this guide helps and thanks very much for watching. You can follow me on Twitter at CWTech, that's at CWTech on Twitter. And don't forget to check out my other videos in my YouTube channel, just Google Chris Waite YouTube. And don't forget to like and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you for your support.